and you're still watching Business Daily on Trust TV. And just before the break, I did say that in the year 2023, we are seeing, you know, startups within Africa um, attract as much as $3.2 million in terms of funding from venture capitalists across the world. However, that was a drop in, um, in, in, the, in the levels of uh, capital that was attracted for the year 2023 as against what we had seen in previous years. How then can startups position themselves right, you know, to attract uh, investment from all around the world? My guest who is a venture catalyst is now with me, Pascal Fordham. Thank you for joining us on Business Daily. Hi, good morning. Thank you for the for this opportunity. Um, Thank you. Trust TV and um, Chiamaka. Good to be here. Thank you, Pascal, for joining us. And let's start off with uh, what I had said during my introduction. We had seen a drop in the levels of, you know, investment coming into uh, Nigeria in terms of how much, you know, startups had attracted from venture capitalists in the year 2023 compared to previous years. What would you say was the reason for that? So I would say that there are a couple of um, reasons that led to the drop of startup funding in Nigeria. One, globally, there is um, a funding winter where startups are receiving less and less of funds globally. But then for Nigeria, there has been a lot of um, development of recent. There have been so many issues of um, startup um, founders mismanaging funds and these are investors funds funds that have been entrusted to vcs to handle and make it and use the money to um, get more profit for these um, limited partners so there has been a lot of issues around startup um, mismanaging these funds there has also been regulatory issues including um, maybe CBM policies, crypto restrictions, inflation, the Jabba syndrome, all of these things um, affect how and the way startups function. So imagine a situation where we, where um, you are an investor, you've invested in a startup and then and, and then the startup gets to mismanage the fund. You will have to do thorough due diligence if at all you intend to invest in that region again. So there has been a lot of uh, all of these issues of recent, and then a lot of startups shutting down. Between 2023 and now, a lot of startups have shut down because of all of these issues, whether low funding, not managing funds well, and a lot of that, like in 2023, Bondo closed up, Payday was bought by um, Bitmama, Vibra, 54G, and all of those startups. A lot has been happening in the startup sector that has made um, the funding to drop down. Well, it's quite unfortunate that, you know, these funds have been mismanaged by startups that um, these VCs had, you know, put uh, some level of interest in. But this, I, the idea of this topic is for our viewers who are, you know, wondering just how they, are, they will be able to attract VCs from Nigeria and across the world, you know, how they can go about this. You are someone who is a venture catalyst. You are a key player in that sector. So let us hear from you. If I were to have a startup now, how then can I, you know, position myself in the right way to attract these VCs, not just within Nigeria, but globally? So, number one, um, startups um, have to note that VCs are in need for the business. And for, for them to make their decision well, there are some basic fundamentals that you have to tick for you to attract investment from VC. One mistake startup made, so many startups make, is that they they come out from day one and they want to land 
VC funds without getting the fundamentals right. That's why a lot of them, because they are focused on funding, they, they have to um, falsify figures and all of those things, which they will still end up mismanaging the fund and all. So one thing one has to do to be able to attract VC funding from the one is building to scale. Most One problem most African startups have is they dream very small. For example, you see someone, you are building the Airbnb for Africa or the Airbnb for Nigeria versus um, startup founders in the US. Imagine um, Mark Zuckerberg that um, runs Facebook and all of those people, when they are dreaming, they are, they are dreaming bigger. Fine, you have to start from your region, but then if you are dreaming small, it also impacts the way you work and think. So if you, are, if you are not building to scale from day one, investors will have issues with it because their fund is meant to yield profit. And for them to yield profit, they have to invest in a business that is scalable and that is fundable. Then the second one is you have to keep your finances intact. If an investor is coming to invest in your business, they will surely have to do serious due diligence. Due diligence involves um, your finances, the regulatory requirement, your team, the founder's background, and all of those things. They have to do that. So it's better you keep it clean from day one. Then you have to focus on your customers before you think about VC funding. If you don't have strong traction, in terms, in terms of customers and revenue, forget it. You won't get VC funding because these people are in need for the business. Then the last one I will make, I will mention, founders market it. So many founders just start business without considering founders market fit. So founders market fit means that these founders are fit for the business. If, for example, I'm a lawyer and I, I run a medical startup, even if I'm not in the field, it's, it's, um, it's required of me to get in someone from the field to be on my team, so that when a, a VC comes in, they will know that these people know what they are doing and they've assembled the right team. So that's all. So traction, the finances has to be intact, building to scale, make sure that you're in a market that is growing, and solving a big problem. We know that um, 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 finance is a big problem in Africa. So imagine you merging finance and then a trending tech like AI. So of course you have to make sure that it's solving a problem, even if you are involving the AI tech and all. So th those are the key things one has to consider when um, I'm building a startup that is meant to attract VC funding. Thank you. You have, you have repeatedly, you know, hammered on the founders and the role that the founder plays at the end of uh, this entire thing. But let us hear from you. Uh, you, you. You also made mention of the founder's background. And I am curious, when you talk about the founder's background, what and what um, are checked before the VC capitalist or the venture capitalist, rather, are really interested in a certain business? So when it comes to the founders, there has to be founders ma ma market fit. And this means that, in simple terms, it means that these founders or this team, they have the right potential or the capability to make this business work. If I'm in, um, I'm, I'm in the field of agri, whereas I don't have a background in agri, I'm running an agri startup or a fintech startup. I don't have a background in fintech and none of my team members are within fintech or they have a background in finance or even banking. It's certain that the business won't succeed because how are you supposed to know the regulations within finance and all of the things that apply in finance? So in simple terms, Founders market fit is about the founders being fit. Are you assembling the right team? There has to be a balance 
like the four key roles have to be balanced the ceo the cfo the cto and then um ceo cfo cto and cmo those are the key rules and it's not just having the key rules do you have the right background i don't expect a startup to have someone from a greek handling the cmo role whereas the person has no experience has no training in marketing so those are the things in fact the 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 founders team is more important than the business idea most VCs invest in the team the team is like key so even if the idea doesn't work tomorrow the startup can pivot to another idea but if the team is very strong enough like you've had people that have run their own startup and they've sold and are starting another startup the VCs are likely to trust in that team even if the idea fails they can pivot to another Okay, uh, Pascal, you have, you know, I feel like personally so much is expected from startups and not so much is expected from the VCs, that is the venture capitalists themselves. But now looking at, you know, let us talk about that. Let us talk about what startups should look out for when these VCs approach them. Because I personally would believe that not anyone who approaches you is, um, is reputable. But what then should these startups look out for when accepting or not accepting uh, this um, finance from VCs? So, number one, startups first have to consider the verticals that the VC is investing in. For instance, some VCs are, um, are structured to invest in certain sectors, let's say education or fintech. If the thesis of a VC mandates it to invest in a specific sector like fintech, it's very, very unlikely that that VC will move beyond the verticals and start investing in agri-tech or other sectors that is outside its thesis. So that's the number one thing startups need to consider before looking for um, reaching out to VCs to invest in their startup. Are they investing in my sector? How about other startups they've, they've invested in in the past? How we are they able to succeed with the funding, the kind of support? So some VCs don't just um, give you money and leave you. They have to, they also link you up to the network of industry leaders that will help you succeed. So that's, in fact, it's one of the key important things um, startups should look out for. Don't go for VCs that just give you funds and expect you to make 100S within a year. You have to go for VCs that will also support you with your network. Maybe you need an introduction within the sector. For any VC to map out um, a very they are investing in, let's say, FinTech, it's very, very likely that they have experience in that field. Maybe a retired bank manager, a retired VC, and all of those. So it's very, very likely they have experience in that sector and they will be able to offer you more support in that sector. So go for VCs that will not just give you funds, they will give you the network or access in case you need to expand your market or get some things done within the sector. They will also, you need to also go for VCs that will mentor you since it is assumed that they already have experience in that sector. These are people that you go to and you trust, you confide in, when you have challenges in business. So those are the kind of um, business I think startups should consider. Number one, not just funding, the mentorship is there, the networking and introduction to industry leaders when need be, or in case you need to close a co collaboration within the sector. Are they people that can open the door to you for you to um, scale your business faster? and a lot of that. So I think those are the key things I think startups should look at when um, searching for VCs. 
Okay, Pascal, we, we also understand that it's not the easiest of things to attract these visas. But for those who are watching and wondering, okay, what are my other alternative, you know, source of funding aside from venture capitalists? What would your advice be to this uh, set of people? Quickly, in one minute, please. Okay, so um, there, are other, there are so many alternatives to VC funding. If you are starting newly as a startup, I will encourage that you go for grants. There are a lot of grants outside there. For example, the Tony Lumini Foundation grants, which offers 5,000 USD. I think they just closed um, on 1st March. It opens 1st to, to first January to 1st March of every year. Then there is the African Business Hero, whereby I think 20 entrepreneurs or thereabout are given 1.5 million USD. I'm not very certain of the amount, but there are a lot of grants out there that you can explore. Then you can explore the aspect of getting loans or debts if your finances are intact for that. Then there is the option of crowdfunding. Instead of going for um, VC investment, you can go for crowdfunding whereby you um, crowdfund money from a lot of investors and all of that. Then there are startup competitions that give um, a lot of money to start up, like the Startup World Cup, JITES, and the like, where people win um, as much as 10,000 USD, 20,000 USD, and even more. So those are the um, some of the opportunities I think startups should um, consider, depending on your level, whether the, you are still an early stage startup or a late stage, so depending. Venture Thank you. capitalist Pascal of Four Dooms speaking intensively as to how startups can attract venture capitalists. Thank you, Pascal, for the very insightful uh, conversation this morning on Business Daily. Well, this is where we draw the curtains on today's edition of the program. Join the conversation on social media and let us hear your thoughts on how startups can attract VCs, not just here in Nigeria, but globally. Uh, my name is Chiamaka Nendu. Thank you for watching and bye for now.